So today we're going to be going through how to install and set up the Monero command line wallet for Linux systems. I tried searching through YouTube and I couldn't find a single tutorial on this, so I thought I'd do it myself. So the first thing we need to do is go on over to getmonero.org. This is where you'll find all the downloads, not on any other Monero related website. Okay, so we go to downloads. We want the command line wallet. You can, of course, use the GUI wallet, but this tutorial is for command line. And then we'll go and select the Linux 64 bit, which is what I'm running. Obviously, if you're on 32 or ARM, pick those as necessary. You can run the command uname slash m, and that will tell you what kind of system you're running on Linux. So in my case, this you can just Google this, and this tells you you're running a a 64-bit system as opposed to a 32-bit system. And so let's go ahead, download these binaries. And then once we've downloaded them, we don't want to be just opening these up and extracting them straight away because it has happened in the past that malicious code has been put on the website and people have downloaded dodgy wallets. And so we want to guard against that and do a double check to make sure that this is in fact the real binaries from the Monero team. So how do we go about doing that? Well, there's a link here if you click show hashes to verify, and then there's a guide here. So it says verify binaries on Linux, Mac, or Windows command line. So we'll go and we'll look at this guide. So the first thing it wants you to do is install a tool called GNU PG, so GNU Privacy Guard. This comes by default on Linux systems, so we're not gonna to need to do that. And then we need to get the key with which the hashes are stored for this download. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hash this. So we're gonna put this file through a hashing function. So in our case, it's it's SHA sum A256, I believe. Now that's going to give us this number, uh, this alphanumeric chain here. And then we check that against the one they've got on the website to see if it's the same. So we can go to here and we'll see that it is in fact the same as this number. But the problem is, how do we know that this number is the correct one, right? Because if someone could get into the website and change that download, it's not unreasonable to think they could change these hashes here to something different. And so that's why we're going to go the rest of the tutorial to check against another source. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull binary fates signing key from the Monero GitHub. So you can actually just go to the Monero GitHub. So this is Monero project, Monero GitHub. And then if you go into utils, GPG keys, you'll find all the developers signing keys in here. And so you can see binary fates is here and you can pull this and download it to your system. I'm just gonna use this command here because we can see that it's obviously not doing anything malicious because it's using the same link as if I were to do something like this. It's just this link here. That's all it is. And so let's go ahead and pull that using wget. So we can see we've got this file downloaded. Now let's go ahead and check the fingerprint of that. So what GPG is going to do is it's going to put this key through some sort of hashing function. I think it's usually SHA-1 or SHA-2. And that's going to produce a code. So let's compare that with this one. Usually with these things, you can just compare the last few and that's good enough. Although if you're particularly security conscious, you might want to check the whole thing. It's 81AC, 81AC, 591F, and then ends in DF92. Okay, I'm satisfied that this is good enough, this fingerprint is correct. And therefore, both the website and the GitHub are in agreement about binary fate's key and that this is actually his key. Now, obviously an attacker 
could have potentially compromised both the GitHub and the website at the same time. Although we can see that this key was actually uploaded in 2019. So they would definitely be playing the long, long game and no one would have had to have discovered them by now. So it's extremely unlikely that all of these measures have gone wrong. Okay, so our fingerprint does match this one. So we're looking good so far. We can see it's binary fits, GPG key. So now let's go ahead and import that so GPG can actually use the key. So let's import it. And we see it should look something like this. It's processed, imported, exactly what this one looks like, basically. Okay, so we now need to go get our hash. So remember, there's all these hashes here, but we don't know that these hashes are actually the real hashes. So let's go grab this file here, essentially, with all the different hashes and then the PGP signature at the end which we're going to check against binary fates key. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that. Again, whenever you're copying and pasting code into your terminal, make sure there's nothing dodgy in here. In this case, we can obviously see it's going to get Monero downloads. It's downloading a TXT file and we're using wget. So I don't think anything major is gonna to happen to us. So let's download those hashes. Do an ls. There we go, we've got our hashes.txt. And then we want to verify that using GPG. So it's a good signature. This is a good sign. Um, we should have pretty much exactly the same message as that does, which is again, a good sign. We're now ready to actually verify the binary. So we've already downloaded the binaries here. And we actually already hashed the file, but I'm just going to do it again. So, SHA-256. Let's full screen this and then grab this. And so we checked that hashes.txt and we checked that that one is actually signed by binary fit and therefore it's unlikely to be a fraud. So let's go into hashes.txt. Let's look for our Linux 84, or Linux 64 rather. Open up a new line, copy and paste the old one, and we see that these keys are exactly the same. And therefore, we can be very confident that our binaries are actually secure. So that's the first bit of our setup sorted. We've downloaded the Monero binaries and we're very, very confident that they're legit. Now we need to actually get the main sort of setup sorted. So let's go ahead and extract this. Wait a second for it to load. So I'm just gonna extract this straight to my downloads folder. We can go in here. And there are a lot of different files in here which might be confusing if you've never used this before. It certainly was to me, and especially if you haven't used the Bitcoin command line wallet before, that it can also be confusing because this uses a, a similar sort of setup. So the first thing that you're gonna actually want to do is to download the Monero blockchain to your local device. Now you do this using the Monero D executable here. So Monero D stands for Monero Daemon, a daemon is just a program that is designed to run in the background all the time, basically. And so the Monero daemon will synchronize itself with the network and grab all the blocks for every transaction that's ever been done using Monero on chain. So to actually use this, you can just do Monero D and then we pass in the data dear flag. So this, you can tell it where you want to save the data to you definitely want to do this on an SSD if possible because everything's going to be way quicker. On a hard drive, it's going to take a very long time to synchronize. And, you know, I bought a one terabyte SSD for like a hundred pounds. So they're not particularly expensive these days. The whole blockchain is about 
80 gigabytes right now. And so it's not that big. And so you can buy a, a smaller SSD. So anyway, I'm just going to provide data dear equals dot. So this folder, you can also tell it to run in detached mode. So running in the background, I'm not going to do that because I like to watch it run. And so we can see here, it's going to start grabbing all of the data from various public nodes, basically. So di different people have decided to run Monero public nodes. My local node here is going to sync with them. Now it's important to note that this here will not distribute the information to anyone else. So we're not going to be setting up a local node in this video. I might do a tutorial on that later on, on how to set up your own public node. But for us and just a simple use case, it's enough to just have your own copy of the blockchain on your own device. And so we see here, it's merrily downloading all these different blocks. So each one of these numbers is a block of transactions. It's downloading them very quickly because obviously when Monero started, back in 2014, I believe, there weren't many transactions in each block. And so the blocks are very small. So I'm gonna cancel this with control C because I've already downloaded the blockchain on a different part of my SSD. And so I'm just going to point the Monero daemon to that directory. But obviously if you're doing this for the first time, you're going to have to download the entire blockchain to be confident that every transaction is as it said it was and that you actually own a given amount of Monero. So I'm just going to direct the Monero daemon to that particular folder and it should in a minute come up saying that it's synchronized and that it's got all the blocks. So yeah, we see this here. It says you are now synchronized with the network. You may now start Monero wallet CLI. So this is what the Monero daemon will say after you've downloaded the full blockchain. Now we can actually start our wallet. So let's go back to our binaries folder here and open up another terminal window. So you can't use this one because the Monero daemon's running in here. So let's go ahead and open up a Monero wallet. So Monero wallet CLI. You don't need to pass any flags in, although if you get stuck, you can do help like this. Sorry, I meant the help flag like this. And that will give you various different things you can use. I'll point out a few of them which are quite useful in a second after we get our basic sword. So all we have to do is Monero Wallet CLI to execute it. It'll then ask for the name of a wallet that we want to use. So I'm just gonna call mine tutorial. I'm not gonna actually use this wallet, so it doesn't really matter. You can give it any name you like and it will create the wallet. So it's confirm creation, yes. Enter a new password. This can be anything you want. We can select a language for the seed. I'm going to select English because I think it would be <laughs> it would be challenging for me to write down the seed in a foreign language. So you see here we've got these 25 words. Now these 25 words are the backup seed for your wallet. You must never share these with anyone else unless you're intending to give them everything in your wallet and full control over it. So I'm saying like a, a will or something. It's best practice to write these down on a physical piece of paper and keep backups in safe places, uh, like in an old book or something. Alternatively, you can keep them on a computer and GPG encrypt them, so on a computer that isn't connected to the internet. Depending on how paranoid you are, there are various steps you can take. Obviously, I'm not going to use this wallet so you can go ahead and recover it if you want. There won't be anything in it. You can enable background mining. So the daemon will mine Monero for you and put that in your wallet. I'm not going to do that just because I'm not particularly interested. And so here we are. We've, we're in our wallet now. 
So it's actually quite easy to use once you've got the initial setup out of the way. So you can do help here. And this will give you all of the basic commands that you can use. It says there you can use help all, and that will give you a much larger list of commands. I'm just going to use help. And so to get started just using this wallet, you only really need two or three commands. So you've got refresh. This pulls all of the most recent blocks and makes sure that you're up to date. We've got balance, obviously allows you to check your balance. We've got address, so you can use address all, and this will list all of your Monero addresses. So obviously with Monero, we can have multiple addresses. And indeed, I can make another one right here. So I can do address new YouTube, let's say. And then if I now do address all, we can see that it's created a, another address called YouTube. And I could say, I could give this to my friend and they could send me Monero. Finally, to actually send money to someone, you just do transfer. Then you want to put the address in here. So I could probably copy and paste my own address, just see what would happen. And then you want to put the amount, so like 0 0.01 Monero or something. Obviously this won't go through because I don't have any Monero and I'm transferring to my own wallet. But what it will do is it will select a random one of your addresses and transfer from that address to this address. You can actually tell the Monero wallet which address you'd like to transfer to and from, but this is a more advanced feature and something that you can look into yourself just using the help command. So if you do help address or, or help transfer, that will get you a more detailed look. Now, in order to recover your wallet in case you've lost it, there are a few different things you can do. So say if your hard drive died, your computer died. The first thing you can do is you can make a backup of these files. So the tutorial and tutorial.keys file. If you do that and then just place them in the same folder as your Monero wallet CLI in your, like, your new system, it will just work fine and you won't have to do anything in particular you'll be able to actually just use the wallet normally if this isn't an option if you've lost these then you can back up from your seed so if i exit out of the wallet here with the exit command i can do monero wallet cli and then let's do help and look at the different commands that we've got here so the one that we want is restore from seed or alternatively you can use restore deterministic wallet. So if we pass this flag now to the Monero wallet, so if I do restore from seed, I can give it a name. So I'm just gonna call this restore. And then you would type your 25 words in here, whatever that looks like and it will, it will restore your wallet so you can actually go ahead and use it. If you've lost your keys, which are those files that we saw earlier, so you've lost these two files and you've lost your seed, then you have lost your Monero. If you have no access to it, the Monero will still be on the chain, you just won't have any access to it. So I think that's everything that I wanted to show you just in this brief tutorial of how to get the Monero CLI installed, how to verify the binaries, how to basically send and receive transactions all from the command line, how to download the full Monero blockchain and use the wallet to verify all the transactions so far. And so with that, I think you're equipped to adventure out on your own and discover any advanced features which you might want to be using. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.